Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sandy Alnock. Welcome to Miles Davis Art YouTube. Where the only thing smoking is my pen. Yeah, I don't smoke, except this pen. That's pretty much the only smoking thing around here. I am gonna be using this pen today for a couple of projects. I'm gonna show you how to enlarge a photo or a drawing to a bigger size using both a freehand and a grid method for accuracy. And then I'm gonna show you how I created at least parts of this drawing of Miles Davis at the end of the video. But in order to prepare yourself for this video, I want you to go to a separate tab in your browser or to another device if you're on a smart device right now and open up the link in the doobly-doo. Pause this video right now, I will wait right here. Thank you so much for indulging me and turning on the music. Let's get started. I do hope my little smoke effect in that opening is worth a like on this video. <laughs> I was feeling a little bit silly. Anyway, I'm going to talk first about freehand enlargement of a photo or a sketch. So if you have a small sketch you've made, you want to make it bigger. This is a quick way to do a freehand enlargement. Basically, make yourself a loose grid. Don't measure anything, but give yourself a box, a rectangle that's about the size of what you want to enlarge, and then divide that. And I'm going to divide this into four columns, basically. You can also divide it horizontally if you want, but this is small enough of a sketch that I can kind of figure that part out. Then I'm gonna draw a rectangle on my sketch page that's approximately the same kind of shape. I'm not gonna worry about making it perfect. I'm not measuring anything. And then I'll draw those lines so I have the four quarters of that rectangle. And then I'm gonna look for the biggest parts in the trumpet. First, the bell. The bell is the big round front thing and figure out kind of how many squares over it goes. It's a little past one quarter and a little short of the top of the, the box. And then make the lead pipe at the angle that you see and it's gonna get a little bit bigger as you get out to the bell. Look for where all the parts are of the trumpet in relationship to each other and in relationship to those lines. Both of those are skills that you're gonna need what, whatever kind of drawing you do. You're going to need to be able to start seeing relationships between shapes. It's gonna help you with perspective. It's gonna help you with getting sizes correct, all that sort of thing. And just sketch things this way a lot. The more drawing you do, the better you're gonna get and the easier it's gonna get and it's not gonna be as difficult. Right here, I am just making a quick sketch. I'm not worrying about trying to make it perfect. I'm gonna use a pen and add some ink lines. I'm not gonna sweat it because this is the loose version, but it's gonna be good enough for horseshoes and hand grenades for the most part. Not every sketch has to be in absolute perfect match to what the real object is. And it, this is gonna look like a trumpet. If I were playing Pictionary, this would entirely overdo Pictionary. So practice drawing things freehand, but when you need to have something be really accurate and it's a real complex object. Like I don't know what a trumpet looks like. I don't know how big all those parts are, so I need some help. So I'm using a website I wish they had when I was in college because we used to have to draw our own grids. And on this website, all you do is upload your image. It's free on this website. It'll put a grid over the top of your image. You can change the color of it. FFF was white and 000 is black and that'll change the color. So depending on whether the image has a lot of color or a little color, you may want white or black. You can change the thickness of the lines and you can change how many lines. So play around with it until it looks like you want that many squares in order to make your drawing. You may need to go back and do this a couple times. So leave the website open so you can go back and revise it and reprint it. So here I've got my drawing printed and it's 18 squares by nine squares. So you wanna have that general size relationship so that you can draw a grid 
that's going to match that on your piece of paper. I began by doing one inch marks. And the one inch marks would mean that I have to do, if I were using that trumpet picture, I would have to do a little mental gymnastics to say two squares of the 18 by nine are equal to one square of the nine by four and a half. That's a little complex. So after I got the one inch marks done, I went in and divided them by two so that I'd have half inch blocks and they're all gonna match whatever the size is on that printout and the size doesn't matter. I used to think you'd have to do calculations and algebra to get the size perfect, but you actually don't. You just need the number of squares and the squares need to be even. You can't have rectangles so that it can't be longer on one end than on the other, etc. So here I'm just going to continue adding my blocks until I have 18 by 9. If you want to start with your finished size, you know how big you want this object to be, then figure out your grid for that first. And then when you go back to the website, you can make it have that many blocks, that, that kind of grid. So it's going to match what your finished drawing needs to be. So like I said, we used to do this all by hand and I am super happy that there is a website. So there's no math to be done really. So now I'm marking across the top. I'm doing all numbers and down the side, I'm doing an alphabet, but I did forget and I put the numbers in row A. So I have to do a little mental gymnastics there. It's helpful if you don't do that to yourself. But you can look square by square and say, okay, I've got a little circle that's in this corner of this square and a little circle in the square next to it. Here I'm looking for large objects. I'm trying to find out where they start and end. And I'm looking for the lines for the lead pipe that goes down the trumpet. And I'm looking for where they start their curve. So I'm marking that. I'm looking at the grid and saying, okay, is that 10 and D? and looking at whether or not it's within the box or whether it's on the line or whether it's when it crosses something, just look for some kind of reference point. Now, when you do this with a grid, it is very complex and it takes a long time to get all of these things measured out. And if you get one that's off, then you have to redraw all the other parts because everything <laughs> cascades from it. So you might just start with box 1A and say, what is the shape in there? And then go to box 1B and then 2A and 2B and just keep going. Or you can do like I'm doing. I'm looking for the big shapes because I want to put those in there. I'm looking for where the bell starts and stops. Where, where's the max point on the top and the bottom and the left and the right? And then I'm going to just join them freehand style. You can like go individually line by line and fix every single part of that by looking for where they cross in each one of those squares in the grid. But you can also simplify that for yourself and just join them and get the shape approximate. So I'm marking the top, the bottom, left and the right. And then I can just join that with my pencil. So you don't have to make everything all that complex. You can simplify it quite a bit using this method. And it depends on exactly how accurate you need to be. If that needs to be a totally, completely, 100 bazillion percent accurate, then follow every square. You can go into the detail of each one of the shapes that's in the reflections inside the trumpet. You can get all kinds of crazy with it if that's what you need to do for your finished drawing. And, you know, I, I will turn you loose <laughs> to let you do as much or as little as you need to in order to create the drawing that you, you're looking for. When you're all done, you can ink it, you can color it with markers, you can watercolor it, whatever you're going to do, just erase those lines and you're good to go. Now I recommend before you forget, like sometime in the next couple of days, enlarge a little picture into a sketch in your sketchbook, just like I've done here, and make notes. Tell yourself what you did, how you did it, how you thought through the measurements, and then write down the name of this video and the name of my channel and the name of that website, because you're gonna to want to have that again someday. And I don't want you to be laying awake at three o'clock in the morning wondering, where is that? Whose channel did I see that on? It was me. So <laughs> I just want you to have that resource. But I finished my, my sketch. You can see this is pretty much more accurate than the previous one. 
But when you look at the two sketches, finished and colored in, the first one, other than a little bit of perspective being off, is not all that bothersome. It still looks like a trumpet, and I would be happy with that if I had just sketched that in my sketchbook. Totally fine. And now for that drawing of Miles Davis. The process to enlarge the photo reference for this drawing is the very same that I used for the trumpet with one caveat. I'm going backwards. This time I started with the finished piece of paper. The photo is square, so I cut a square of 19 inch by 19 inch paper. So I had a 19 by 24 pad and made one inch marks both vertically and horizontally. Remember, they have to be squares, so you use the same measurement both directions. Then I could take the photo, upload it into the website, and have it print out the photo at the proper grid size for that. Just you know, make sure that the numbers of squares that you need are the right number that comes out of the website. So here is the photo reference. It's a photo by Irving Penn. If you Google Irving Penn and Miles Davis, you'll find a bunch of really great photos from his shoot that he did with him. Absolutely amazing. And I began by putting pencil lines just for the outlines of the shapes. You know, the location of the eyes and the eyebrows, the hands, the face, the nose, that sort of thing. And just started working little by little on all these parts to put them all together into the drawing. And the great thing about the grid method is as you start working through the pen and ink details in it, and you wonder how far over does this shadow go? And how, you know, where is that little mole on their skin? Where is that fold in the eye? All those small details, you can go back to the photo, you can look at that little grid, and then all you're focusing on is that grid. What is in that box? And how much of that box does it take up? It's an excellent exercise to help yourself get used to seeing the relationship between shapes. Because you're looking for the relationship between the shapes in that square and making sure they're the same as the shapes that you're putting in your drawing. You're no longer worried about, does that look like an eye? Does that look like a lip? You're more worried about, is it looking like what's in the square? And it doesn't matter if it's an eye. It doesn't need, you don't need to think of it as an eye. Think of it as shapes, shapes and shadows. And when you are checking to see if your shadow is coming over far enough, how much of that eyelid has highlight on it, you can look at the grid and find out where that starts and where it ends and start to give yourself a plan for exactly how much of, of all of that stippling you're going to be doing. And uh, with this paper, one of the things I did find out, which was a little unfortunate, but I'm going to frame this sucker anyway because I loved it and I enjoyed the process and I'm going to frame it anyhow, is painting all that black in because I knew I had to do a lot of stippling and small work for the face, but the rest of the drawing is like black, like lots of it is black. So the paper didn't like working with ink and I have just kind of, it, it looks a little warbly. The paper did warp some, so it's going to need some good flattening and everything before I can frame it for the studio. But nonetheless, I'm going to frame it because I really like this piece. I just need to save up some moolah to frame. I, I tell you, I'm just signing my life over to the frame shop in these last couple of years. But that's all good because I, I like it when art comes out worthy of buying a frame for it. I'll tell you a little quick story about the paper before I end this video. This is paper that I bought when I was in college, or actually it was just after college, I think. It was the one paper that I liked at the time. I wasn't very experienced. I, I thought this was the only paper that I could work on, and the plant had a big fire at it, and I was worried you would never find this paper again, and actually they stopped making the paper, and I bought like, I don't know, eight or 10 pads of it. And these are 19 by 24s. I carried them around with me every move that I have made across the country all these years. And I am finally starting to use the paper <laughs> after all this time. I don't know if any of you has something that was an art supply that you bought and you just treasured it so much and you were afraid it would go away and you just couldn't use it. Well, use it. That's what I'm doing. I'm just using it. Like, I'm going to end up dying before I use all this paper, so I need to just use it. 
I do plan to be making more drawings on this paper. I'm going to use it. I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. So that is my finished drawing. And I'm thinking maybe I could put the dogs to work or maybe sell one of them and they can like be the payment for getting a frame for this. What do you think? No, I can't do that to the pups. I will save up for it. I think it's kind of cool. What do you think? Thank you so much for joining me for Miles Davis Art YouTube. I'll see you again on Saturday for another episode. Don't forget, go make yourself an enlargement in your sketchbook. Because you're going to want to remember this someday. And you're never going to remember where you heard it from. I'll see you guys in a couple days with the next video.